Alright folks, Nat 971 a here, continuing the experiment on Tesla's wireless transmission circuit. I'm going to give you a real quick overview of my system. I've been quite quick on my videos previously, so let's have a look. Okay, you can see one of my spheres there. And there's my other sphere there. Okay, just in, in my previous videos, this is the transmitter leading up to the sphere that's on the roof, the highest one. Okay, this is my receiver here, and we've got uh, three lights plugged into the wireless receiver, uh, which light up. And then I've got my modif uh, well, bit more crazy invention of uh, some sort of a Harold Aspen, Edwin Gray type uh, conversion tube that powers these lights up wirelessly, which I'll show you in a sec. Okay, what you're looking at here is. Uh, three lights being uh, lit by the wireless receiver. The middle one is a little bit dodgy. It was a broken uh, CFL for some time ago. This one over here isn't connected to anything. It's only connected to the ground. I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, these ones here are quite strange. They're just light up, not plugged into anything. So, you know, it's the conversion tube is... Um, pumping out a lot of energy there. Uh, I was previously only able to do that with about 60 volts, so I'm currently running at about 36 volts. And I've actually swapped my batteries around. Um, there's two 36 volt packs. There's this one here and there's one outside. I've just swapped them around. I just wanted to see if uh, the ones that are connected to the conversion should be charging up because these ones here that were outside, they just just weren't losing any power. They were just, uh, I think they were about 38 volts last time I checked. So I'm interested to see if running this for a while charges up the batteries or not, or find out what's going on there. But um, definitely transmitting heaps of power. Oh, I was going to show you the amp drawer. There's some talk about the uh, the amp drawer there. You know, let's see if I can get in there real close. Now, it's a bit hard to read it, but it looks like it's about 200 or something uh, milliamps there. Alright, so I'm going to show you this one here uh, is connected to the ground. I'm going to turn the system off. Uh, it's a bit safe, I don't want to get shocked. Okay, so we've got the yellow and green and the black. And uh, they're just sitting on the floor here. There's one end. Where's the other end of it? Maybe it's somewhere, I think. No? No, there's black. Oh, there's a block there. High voltage ignition destruct gap, creating both high voltage and high frequency. Simultaneously, the straight conductor of the metal rod carrying electricity to the spark gap emits electrical radiation, which is radiant energy. This type of radiant energy consists of rays directed toward the center of the metal rod attached to the ignition head, plasma. Edwin V. Gray used a special copper matrix grid to collect this type of energy. The result is cold electricity, where the load is cooled when using this energy instead of being heated. In 1901, Nikola Tesla mentioned high voltage cathode rays and high voltage cathode rays emitting electrical radiation that could be received through an aluminum plate antenna, his radiant energy patent. This was the fourth type of receiver in the patent. Essentially, Edwin V. Gray's system works on the same principles described by Tesla. What's unique is that Edwin V. Gray never mentioned Nikola Tesla during his discovery of cold electricity. Similarly, Tesla never spoke of cold electricity. However, Gray died under mysterious circumstances, fueling speculation that he may have been assassinated. This raises suspicions that Edwin V. Gray was tapping into a different academic discipline with the same roots as Tesla's. It is possible that Nikola Tesla and Edwin V. Gray studied the same curriculum, which involved ether electricity physics. This is an ancient science associated with the lost Tartaria Empire. The dominance of the New World Order is seen as the replacement and takeover of Tartaria. 
This is an intriguing lost history theme, so suggesting that much of Orthodox history is a fabrication, akin to historical there. fiction. Yeah. Edwin V. That's Gray's free coil. energy device it's can be successfully coil. built if the principles plane. of the circuit are followed, so including the correct indexing of electronic components. The classic version of Edwin V. Down. Gray's invention was a groundbreaking development for the electronics the industry. Green, the green At the wire. time, Gray did not have access to modern oscillators and very short up. pulse controllers with digital displays like we do today. Instead, he used electromechanical devices. Gray's cold electricity circuit has two outputs, one dedicated to the load consuming cold electricity and another that feeds into a battery bank, which can be used to power an inverter to create AC current. If you want to use cold electricity for electrotherapy, you will need additional knowledge to apply it. DC motors and electrical equipment that consume DC electricity are compatible with cold electricity. Therefore, uh, the two output mode should be used. Uh, block, the complete technical details of Edwin V. Gray's cold electricity radiant energy generator are detailed in the overunity over generator. <laughs> you can check out both classic and modern schematics, <laughs> as well as instructions on how to build it. Wishing you success in your creation, and good luck.